Hey, welcome to Home Renovision. Today we got a quick little video that runs through the five steps to installing brand new carriage lights beside your front door. Today's video is made possible by a laser level. We're using this, my DeWalt cross line, and this works great. I set it up on a regular camera stand because it comes with the threading underneath and I can adjust the height of my laser line. How awesome is that? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set my line pretty much the middle of the detail of this door, which is perfect. So then when a light is mounted on it, it'll have the carriage and then it'll just be really nice, just around eye level, perfect location. So step one, of course, is to locate the position of the lights. Having a laser line gives me a perfect level line on each side. All I'm gonna do is use this thing my little square here, measure off. I want the center of my, my fixture actually to be about 10 inches from the inside of my jam. And I'm just going with that because it gives me enough space where I can have my brick mold outside, a little bit of siding, and then the light fixture, nothing's really interrupted. Okay, that looks good. I'm using that, there we go, we'll make our mark. And that'll be my drill line. I'll do the same on the other side. Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna just drill all the way through to the other side because we have to establish our light fixture box and sometimes it requires cord drilling a little bit of the wall out. So we're just going to use the same, you know what, <laughs> I'm gonna show you this. I'm gonna use the same bit size as on my hole saw, okay? This gives me the ability to drill a hole in the outside of the wall and have perfect control. So let's just pretend for a minute that this is the face of my building and I'm bringing, adding an electrical box. I'm adding an inch and a half. Now, when I put my Tyvek and then my strapping over top of that, which is 5 eighths, and then I add a half inch thick siding, it takes me about 3 eighths of an inch shy of the box. So if I just mount the box on the wall and then add my siding, I'm going to put my fixture over top of this. It's not going to close that gap very well. I'm going to have a place where I got penetration and ugly. So what I want to do is I want to take the circle and drill it in at least three eighths so this box is recessed. Now here's the secret. If I go too deep and I'm be behind my finished surface and because it's a vinyl siding and I try to mount my box, I'm going to collapse all of the vinyl siding. So I really want to have that perfect. So we have three quarter inch wood on the outside. It's going to be really hard to drill just three eighths out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the whole three quarter and then I'm going to pack in behind with a little something to get this raised to the right surface. So I'm going to go out and drill that hole. I'm going to put my tip in the same spot as the hole I just drilled and then that'll work out lovely. Now I'm using a regular round bit. Uh, this is a, just a hair bigger than my electrical box, which will be perfect. And you got to be careful here because if the bit grabs, the heel's going to come up at your face. So get a good hold on it and go on low speed and don't push too hard. Let the bit do the work. Or that'll happen. <laughs> All right. So I might get lucky here. Because my hole is in the middle of the two pieces of siding, I actually have a place where I might be able to break this wood out without causing too much damage. Interesting. That's a melamine surface, oddly enough. I'm not sure what I'm finding back here, but it's, uh, it's pretty darn creative. Okay. Wow, these old houses, you never know what you're gonna find, eh? Okay. I think the depth is good now. Let me change my bit. We'll go on to the next step. The reason we need to use one of these boxes here, and I can't just use a pan box, is because I'm putting a light on each side, so I have two wires coming out here. Now, you can't, according to the code, put two wires into a pan box. 
So it would make it a lot easier. And on the other side, I'm just putting a pan box. I'm gonna run one wire right over to there, surface mount that one, it'll be great. But this one needs special consideration, which is why I'm demonstrating it. Now, take out the cutout hole in the back of your box, and then put in your connector. And you're gonna to wanna to recess that right in the wall. Before you can do that, you gotta drill a hole for the connector. Now, we're doing the rustic modern farmhouse look here, which is a lot of open concept, a lot of uh, old looking exposed wood. But when choosing fixtures, it's difficult. So I want a question I'm gonna ask you guys. I'm curious to know if you'd like to see more of a antique look here, like a carriage lamp, or if you wanna see something more modern. So put your answer in the comment below. I'd love to hear your opinion on that. Step three, drill the hole. So now what we have here is we have a, some wood left in that wall that's gonna set the depth. Oh, I'm gonna like that. That is gonna work really good. <laughs> I like it when a plan comes together. <laughs> now we're gonna use three mounting screws here. Just because I can and whenever I got a chance to tighten something on with a little overkill, I'll take it. Try to level that off. Beautiful. All right, we're golden. Now what you can do, this is gonna sound a little nutty, but you can use these little screws that, that hold the wire, right? You're traditionally, you've got this little clamp system built into the box and that screw comes out the back of the box. Now you can use that screw as a leveling system. So you can loosen it, you can tighten it, and you can adjust the depth of the, of the box, okay? And you can help to square it all off. So when you're installing your fixture, if it seems a little twisted, just come back over here, because your mount screws are in the middle, and you can use those two screws like a depth setter to twist it. It's a really handy tip. Now we gotta push the wire through from the other side. We're gonna push through a good solid foot just so that we have a healthy amount of wire on the other side. There we go. Mission accomplished. So the little plastic table connector in the back of the box actually keeps the wire from pulling back out. So we're just gonna measure off how much wire we want to come to this box, we'll add a little bit more. That way we can leave a little bit extra wire rolled up inside the wall cavity, just in case somewhere down the road, the wires get bent or cut, or you can always save yourself and rewire. I'll just pull this around here and we're going to push our way through the box here there we go Doo -doo -doo. and whoop. strip these wires Now, we're gonna just roll all those wires back in the box again. On this white one, I'm just gonna put O-U-T, so I know this is the outside light. And then I won't confuse myself when I come back later. Okay, and of course, like always, you know, you need staples within just the first few inches of the box. Leave yourself a little extra, never hurts. And remember, these staples are just to keep things All right, out of the way for drywall. So the only thing left to do now is to drill a hole from the outside in our pilot hole that we made so I can mount this on the wall in the same location. We can have our rough-in complete after I bring one wire over from this box to the other one. Listen, if you like this kind of information, you want to see a really great job, we wired up a bathroom with all the fixings. We got all kinds of neat little fixtures and every, all the tips and tricks that you need to wire. I suggest watching that one. Just click the video right here. We'll see you there.